Hey there, working on the melody for Flute for Ode to Joy. It is using our first five notes, B flat, C, D, E flat, and F. As a quick reminder, B flat, thumb, one, four, and far pinky. We are counting our six down the front, one, two, three, four, five, six, so six fingers. We do not count pinkies or thumbs when we count those numbers. So thumb, one, four, and far pinky. The C, one, and far pinky. Remember the flute needs to be setting on the shelf. You have to turn this first finger into a shelf to hold the flute. Do not, on the C, do not use your thumb to hold the instrument in any other way. Your thumb just has to float. The D, almost everything is down. Thumb, two, three, four, five, six. E flat, just like the D, but we're adding the far pinky. And then F, thumb, one, two, three, four, with the far pinky. The far pinky is going to stay down for all of the notes we're doing today, except the D. All right, so we're gonna start with two Ds and then an E flat. Ready? So these two fingerings stay the same, and then we add the pinky. Ready? If you're doing the D and the E flat, you should not stop the air in between it. This would be incorrect. Even though I didn't suck air in, I stopped pushing the air out. And as we've learned earlier this year, we must flick our tongue while continuously blowing the air. Squeezing the air out of our body, not stopping the air between notes. When we get to the F, if our air is not correct, it's gonna come out low instead of high. This is correct. And this is wrong. There's a lot of factors that go into whether the low F or high F comes out. Um, some of the key factors are the speed of the air and the size of the hole. And the two are connected because the bigger the hole is, the slower the air is gonna be. The way that we make the air go faster is with a smaller hole. The hole is technically called the aperture, and as it gets bigger, it also gets wider. So low notes is bigger and wider. High notes is smaller and more circular shaped. So we add two Fs after what we started before. And then it walks back down. Ideally, you would go four measures before you take your first breath. If you are out of breath, you can sneak right there in between measures two and three. So starting in measure three, thumb one, four, far pinky for the B flat. There's two B flats and then a C. Two B flats and then a C. From the C, we switch to a D, which almost feels like trading all the fingers, except for this A flat pinky key we haven't learned yet as beginner flute players. But all the other fingers are trading. So if you're struggling right there, you should definitely spend a lot of time practicing just from C to D. That's too hard, go slower. The key is to get to the point that you're not undoing the C fingering and then doing the D, but that they're all switching at the same time, simultaneously switching from one to the other. So as we continue, there's another D and then two Cs, so measures three and four would sound like this. When we see five and six, it's exactly the same as one and two. Just not that fast. All right, that takes us to measure seven. Seven looks exactly like measure three did, but eight doesn't. The rhythms are the same, the pitches are different. In three and four, we had B flat, B flat, C, D, D, C, C. But in seven and eight, we have B flat, B flat, C, D, C, B flat, B flat. Let's try seven and eight. Ready? Again, seven, eight. No, 
Now, before we look at the part starting at measure 9, I have to point out that 13, 14, 15, 16 is identical to what we just did in 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we already know three quarters of the song. Okay, so measure 9 through 12 shows us the other part that's different. Um, this part also has some eighth notes in it, and those eighth notes get half of a beat each. So we start with two C's and then a D. We practiced the C to D switch just a moment ago. Two C's and a D. After the D, we're going to drop down to a B flat. Ready? Again, measure nine. If you're not careful, your beginning is going to sound great because you're going to practice that a lot, but you have to practice the whole song. And because the other parts are so repetitive, you really need to practice this measure nine through 12 part far more than the other parts so that you can be just as good at it. All right, when we look at measure 10, it's quarter note, two eighth notes, two quarter notes. The rhythm is one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. I'm gonna do fingering along. So I'm gonna chant the letters and finger. Ready? C, D, E flat, D, B flat, again. C, D flat, D, B flat. If you're like, wow, that's going too fast, then don't try to play it yet. Finger it slower. If you can't finger it, you're not gonna be able to play it either. Slowing it down, ready? C, D, E flat, D, B flat. And you can slow that down as much as needed. Hit the pause button on the video and slow it down more. Once you get good at it, unpause the video and we'll play it. All right, this is playing measure 10 on the slow side. Ready? Again, measure 10. Measure 11 is almost identical. If we were to do a Venn diagram with compare and contrast, first note would be the same, second note would be the same, third note would be the same, fourth note would be the same. The rhythm of the two measures would be the same, but the last note would be different. In measure 10, we ended on a B flat, and in measure 11, we end on a C. So measure 11 goes to the C instead of the B flat. Measure 12 is our final little piece of the puzzle to look at. The most common problem with beginners in that measure is letting the F come out low, like this. If it comes out low, remember the faster air, smaller hole that we talked about earlier. All right, so that's kind of working you through the different parts of it. Please use the other video to practice playing the song and you can stop and pause and rewind and work the parts you need as much as you need. And when you get good at it, you'll make your recording of you playing the whole thing and you'll submit it to be a part of the virtual band.